Little Dahlia could not have been born more perfect, and new mom Karen could not be more proud or relieved. Karen has type 1 diabetes. We had heard different stories, some, you know, being very negative, others being much more positive. But we decided we really had to see for ourselves and we would take whatever precautions necessary to do the best we could. Karen understood that having diabetes, type 1 or type 2, raises the risk of complications during pregnancy, including high blood pressure, miscarriage and stillbirth. There is also a greater risk of birth defects. So we were holding our breath through the first part, especially when, when you have some testing you get reassured, but you never know until the baby comes out. So that was our biggest worry. The baseline risk of having a baby with a birth defect is variable, maybe somewhere between 3 to 5 percent in the general population. And if you have well-controlled diabetes, the risk is probably not much different than that. But if your diabetes is not well-controlled and if you're on the other end of the spectrum, you might have as much as a 25 to 30 percent chance of a major birth defect. Babies of diabetic moms also tend to be larger, a reason why more than half are delivered by C-section. That means they could face more problems down the road. Those babies, those large birth weight babies, are more likely to have impaired glucose metabolism as children. They're more likely to be obese as children. Limiting the chance of these complications takes preparation and proper care. Here at the Jocelyn Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center Diabetes and Pregnancy Program, experts have some important advice. They urge women with diabetes, or even those at high risk of getting the disease, to see their doctors a few months before they conceive to make sure glucose levels are under control. Then they advise close monitoring throughout the pregnancy. Our patients have more frequent visits. Um, they might be seeing somebody at least every two weeks early in the pregnancy, whether it be an obstetrician or the endocrinologist, to make adjustments um, to try to figure out where they're at because each trimester of pregnancy things change. Throughout her pregnancy, Karen monitored her sugars closely, testing eight to ten times a day to pick up any problems. As she got closer to her delivery, Karen was seeing her doctors twice a week. The biggest challenge, I would say, was that I have an insulin pump, so you set up the levels and how your, your uh, rates of insulin goes into you through the whole day. And at some point, you know, you're, you say, oh, I've got it all straight, and you feel pretty good, and there's not too many changes. But when you become pregnant, that all changes, because as, as, as the baby gets bigger, bigger, you need more insulin. The good news? For those who are able to control their glucose levels throughout pregnancy, the results are most often excellent. They do very well. There's still a risk of large birth weight babies, even in well-controlled um, patients with diabetes but the outcomes are usually very good. For Karen and her husband Fred, 6 pound 11 ounce dahlia is proof that close monitoring can pay off. Karen wants other women to know that even if you have diabetes, you can take steps to have a healthy baby. We plan on having more children and honestly the the program at Beth Israel and everything we went through uh, monitoring my blood sugars has really inspired us to feel like okay, we're okay to expand our family, because going in, we didn't know how it was going to be. So now we feel very encouraged to go back and have a second and who knows how many more children after that.